Dave in Massachusetts, when you're not in Florida, that is. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and I'm going to cut a gradient tinted bifocal lens for your Ray-Ban frame that you sent me. You said which was new. I mean, it appears new, but what you don't realize, you have one of the very, very rare. I am wearing something very similar. This is the new Wayfair. It's been made since 1992. I'm wearing it in color 6012 to match my shirt and pants for today. Of course, I change my frames every day. I just pop my prescription lens into a different color. But you have one of the rare ones. This frame has been made since 1992, and it's gone through a few modifications. This is like a Wayfair or two. In fact, it is model number RAP1212, which I have never even seen, never even heard of. This is legit. It's got the Ray-Ban logo on this side and the RB on the lenses. This, you could actually sell the lenses on eBay. I get emails from people a few times a year looking for these vintage lenses and they just can't find them, so I'm gonna refer them to you. But I'm gonna take the lenses out of your frame. I'm just gonna use a little bit of heat. These are actually little polished glass beads and this is no more than just a, a crock pot if you will keeping them warm but i'm going to use the heat heat to make your frame a little bit more flexible just because this is old plastic and i don't know how it's going to work i'm going to take these pliers my rubber coated pliers and get one lens out there's one let me do the same thing for this side let me put a little bit more heat a little bit more heat the last thing I want to do is break this vintage frame. All right, let's take this other lens out. And there it goes. Everything is good. We're all good here. I do, since this is used, nothing personal, but I always like to clean the interior of any frame before I trace it if it has been used because sweat, body oil, anything like that can get in there and affect it the way this traces. So now that that's out, and those are your heavy glass lenses, I'm about to put in some lightweight lenses that's going to make this frame much more comfortable. But I'm going to put your Italian frame into my Italian Santanelli. This is the LE1000 Patternless Edger. And the stylus has popped up and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of your frame. And then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You're only disappointed in the guy who's cutting them, but hey, I can't fix that. This is great technology, this not so much. So, of course you did not buy the frame for me, so your lenses are not free. I'm gonna pull the shape up on the computer, put in one measurement there, and these are, hang on, I gotta program some more. And this is being cut for a plastic frame. So, set that down there. These are your lenses. This is your right lens. The gradient lens that's going to go in there and the bottom's going to be clear where your bifocal is at. I'm going to get, put the lens there. This is a block. This is what I need to attach to your lens in order to cut it while it stays in the machine. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker that can go on here. And wouldn't you know it, 3M, the same people who make post-it notes, make a double-sided adhesive sticker. Save the day. So the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there, pull away the tape to make my side sticky. Now I'm going to get everything lined up. Essentially what I'm looking in is an optical crosshair, a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. And I'm going to make sure your lenses, for starters, are horizontal. So that is good. Let me do the same thing now for your left lens. These lenses come clear and I stayed up all night, 24 hours straight, tending your lenses. No, okay, actually I did it today when I got to work, but it sounded impressive, didn't it? Okay, let me put that sticker on there and pull the tape away to get your lens lined up. Actually, Dave, I went out and I collected berries in the forest at midnight with no shoes on, uphill, both directions. I brought the berries home. I put them in a mortise and pestle and crushed them until I had the dye, and then I just scraped it onto your lens. You are believing this, right? Okay, so I'm going to put the lens into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. But the first thing that's going to happen, apart from really bad humor, is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of your frame onto the lens to make sure this is large enough to cut out. 
starting with the rear surface closest to your eyelashes, the concave side of the lens. And then it's going to move over and trace the convex front surface of the lens, all the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know where to place the bevel so it fits best inside your frame. The cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your lens material. And this wheel in the center with that little channel, that valley, that's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door, but I just want you to see as your prescription lenses touches down on the cutting wheel. So your lenses are Plano at the top, which means no prescription with a plus 250 bifocal at the bottom. And this is a flat top 28 lens. These are plastic lenses because polycarbonate is very difficult to tint. So you will be getting plastic lenses with full UV protection, has UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes now. So your lens was flat just a moment ago, just like a nickel. I could take it out and it would stand on the counter. Now the bevel is being applied to the lens. The bevel is a knife-like edge that's going to fit inside the bevel of this frame. When I say knife-like, it's a very dull knife like me. It is sharp enough to cut wet tissue, providing you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight, like I did with the berries that I went and picked to collect the dye. But yeah, t after the tissue has been soaking overnight in a bucket of water, you can take your lens out and push very hard on the wet tissue, and you might be able to cut through it if you're very strong. So out comes your lens. Once I hit this button, look, it's even the chuck button. I'm going to change that to Charles, but I do want to dry your lens off so it's not slippery while I'm working on it. And I'm going to go to my, you still have some rough edges left over from the cutting cycle, so I'm going to use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running, and my finger gets warm due to the friction, but it's that friction that allows me to smooth out any rough edges that you have, and I'm going to clean that off now, and let's see if I can get this mounted into your frame. I have the frame turned upright. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner, which is closest to me. And using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. No, it does not want to fit. So I'm going to take it down about a quarter of a millimeter. The golden rule, you can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. So to all my American friends, of course, Dave, you're a retired engineer. You know what a millimeter is. But to my American friends who don't, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one quarter of that distance off going around the circumference of your lens until it gets smaller and smaller and small enough for the perfect size to fit. The reason why I don't want to force it in there, if the lens is too large, it can distort the shape of your frame, causing, if you think of your frame as a gutter, which essentially is kind of what it's like it is, a shape like one, if the lens is in there too large, it forces your frame to roll, as we call it, R-O-L-L. -L. And it's just an ugly cosmetic look that in the future, the lenses won't want to stay in there. So I'm going to make sure these are very precise and fit perfectly. I know how engineers are. They're going to get their calipers out and measure and make sure everything is done correctly. But I do have one question. If you wanted these cut correctly, why did you ask me to do it? <laughs> Sorry, I always get a chuckle over that. You couldn't find a more professional optician to do this for you? One that will go behind a wall and not let you watch any of this? Because that's, that's how professionals do it. They hide stuff from you. It's only as non-professionals that let you watch everything that goes on. So again, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first. And then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. And it snaps right in. So now I want to do the same thing for the left. Flip that. Make the R and L. And hit Start. And just like before, the caliper is going to come down, but this time they're going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame to make sure the lens is large enough to fit. Always starting with the concave rear surface, and then it's going to move over and trace the convex front surface. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day.
as soon as the left lens begins cutting, I will continue to work on your right lens. Okay, so this block is no longer needed. I'm going to pull that off of your lens, pull that sticker off, it is no longer needed. I do want to do a little bit of quality control. I'm going to have a graph here. I hold it up to make sure that lens is in their level and it is. I couldn't have done a better job if I cut it myself. I'm going to put your frame into my Marco 101 lensometer to read the prescription. And I would like you to notice how dusty the top of my equipment is here. I just need someone to come over and clean it for me. And I'm reading zero, non-prescription Plano. I'm going to read the bifocal power. And I'm reading plus 250, which is halfway between 2 and 3. So we're good to go there. And that is it. You can see how the top half of the frame lens is tinted and the bottom half is clear. Now for your other lens, I tinted the bottom of the lens and the top is clear. You know, I just thought that would look pretty cool. You got you to admit that it, that it would. So now the lens is getting the bevel put on there. And as soon as it comes out, we'll see if it fits. Actually, I can tell these have not been used because the one problem, the reason why they could quit putting the spring hinges in is that it would flare outward for no apparent reason. It would just get loose, so that's why they quit putting the spring hinges. The fact that yours is still relatively straight means there is very little wear and tear on this frame. I don't know if you've had these for 20 years, but it looks like it, and you never wore them. Okay, so, back to the handstone real quick, back to the safety bevel. Now actually, this white powdery substance you see along the edge of your lens, that is called Schwarf. I lied, that's one more vocabulary lesson of the day. And if you're a Mel Brooks fan, this is where you say, may the Schwarf be with you. But it's not gonna be with you because I wiped it off your lens. So. Let's see if this fits. I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner. And Dave, I apologize, I've been silly all night with these videos. You just caught me on the tail end of silly. Oh, doesn't fit. Let me take a little bit more off. The golden rule, you can always take more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. So I'm putting it back into the machine and I hit retouch. It's gonna skip the cutting wheel and go straight to the bevel wheel and take a little bit more off. This late in the day, I should have calibrated the equipment, <coughs> but I was too busy eating oatmeal cookies, as you'll see in Elmo's video, Elmo with clear lenses, that I shot before doing yours. I just had to get the hard ones out of the way for practice before I did your easy lenses. And I closed the door so water wouldn't splash, but let me see, I'm going to clean my lens. Hopefully no water got on there. Make sure no water is splashing. Out comes your lens. dry everything off back to the handstone back to wiping all the schwarf off your lens so again I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner and using my thumbs I press down at the nose it snaps in perfectly let me take this block off dry your lens off I do want to make sure the left lens is mounted perfectly in the same height as the right and it's so well on that line, I have to move it just to see. Yes, yes it is. And I'm gonna put it in my lensometer, read the power. No prescription in the top. Let me read the power of the bifocal. Plus 250, so we're good to go there. Now also, while I'm cleaning your lenses, I do like to point out that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if you get these and they're a little loose or a little tight or high on one side, just stop by your local place and they'll adjust it for you for free. So that's that. If anyone has any questions about what I can and can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. 
Dave, I hope you enjoyed watching as I made your bifocals with a gradient gray tinted lens and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.